How are we doing folks? Welcome back to the channel. Day two, testing out the RAR Mantis electric dirt bike. Today we're out here in the beautiful streets of downtown Los Angeles. Real quick, I'm just gonna jump straight back into my thoughts on the bike. It's still a little bit dirty from our last ride. I wanna show you guys how to put the battery in. Once you take the battery out of the bike, which I have to do to transport in my SUV. By the way, there's a 2021 RAV4. It does fit in the back of this. I think this is probably the limit of size bikes that would fit in the back of this. If the seat is closed, and the battery's out, you can't open the seat to put the battery in. You have to use this little thing and put it in this little hole right here. You pop that, the seat pops open, and you can pop it up. This is where the battery goes, pretty similar to the Saron. So you get this, this is like the power connector thing. Get that out of the way, and then you just slide it in. Pretty much the exact same process. One thing I do like is that this is much nicer to put in than the little plug that you have to put in with the Saron. If you have a Saron, you know what I'm talking about. It's like this flimsy plug that always feels like it's gonna snap when you are going to put it in. This is way sturdier, so that's good. And you flip the breaker on, put that down, key in the ignition, bike powers on. And boom, as you can see today, we're at 76% battery. It is in park. I'm gonna run Strava today, get an estimation of how much elevation we do, how many miles we do, and see how much battery we have after the ride is up to give you guys an idea of what type of range you can expect. Let's get to it. Okay, let's get to it out here in the City of Angels. Going to straight to Eco 3 is where we'll get things started. First ride out here in the streets. So, I mean, it's no surprise that on a Suron, you can kind of do a little bit of everything, right? You can ride it in the streets, you can ride it in the dirt. Uh, and that's part of the gigantic appeal that that bike has. So today we're kind of going to see if this bike can do the same thing. Now, granted, there's not really a ton of dirt out here in downtown LA, but there's enough. Go ahead and throw in sport mode. There's enough to kind of, you know, give this bike a nice feeler and see how it handles. Right here, we're by LA State Historic Park. Not really supposed to be riding up in here on this bike, but we are going to swing through real quick. I don't know where this goes. A little bit of rock, gravel. So I was pointing out that this bike handles pretty well off-road, even though I didn't really test it that hard off-road. I only took it on a couple trails in Elysian Park on my first test. Uh, I was impressed. Now the thing is, this bike is just not anywhere near as subtle as the Suron. It is bigger, it is much bigger. And it has way more of like a dirt bike presence. So on the Suron, you can kind of get away with like sneaking around in different areas on it that you like totally shouldn't be in. I feel like I'm going to be far less capable of doing that on this bike. It is just, it's just, you know, like I mentioned in the previous video, there's, there's a presence that this bike has. It is just like, it's there. You know, there's no kind of mistaking what it looks like. It looks like a dirt bike, straight up, full stop. You know, it's got a bigger rear tire. It is, it's, it's big. You know, the frame is much larger uh, than on the Suron. So it's much harder to kind of, you know, sneak around on it. You can you, once you're somewhere, you are there. Anywho, check this out. Hey, nothing going on here. I'm trying to find some areas to kind of test out how it feels on dirt. <laughs> I didn't seem too bothered. Where is that music coming from? I, was, I thought someone was yelling at me. All right, anywho. Why do you guys point it out? It feels like, it looks like it pulls harder than the Suron. I can say from riding it, I think you're right. Because the bike is bigger, it kind of feels the same as the Suron and how it like pulls you once you pin the throttle. But I think you are accelerating much quicker. It's hard to actually tell. I would have to like, I do plan on doing a video where I take both these bikes out. I'm gonna have one of my buddies ride the Suron and I'll have this and they'll switch off, see which, who likes what better, do some comparisons. Uh, as far as like speed and all that stuff, but I do believe this is faster. I mean, it has a, a motor that is 1500 watts stronger at peak power, so and even though the batteries are very similar, I do believe that that would account for some amount of speed. And you know what, I'm just not realizing I totally forgot to start my Strava, so uh, we're just gonna go ahead and stop real quick and do that because I realized we're going uphill, pinning it in sports mode. That is definitely gonna kill the battery faster than anything, you know. 
So we burned 5% and probably about half a mile. Okay, we're just gonna start from here. We are at 71% right now. Let's see our time, speed, distance, and miles. We do on today's ride. Woo! Don't spark. <laughs> I, one thing that even the manufacturers told me not to do is it is not well advised to start this bike off from a dead stop in sports mode. It does have this tendency to just like yank itself out from you. I wish it had a little bit more jumping capability, even popping off curbs. It kind of just rolls off the curb. I do need to get used to the balance of this bike. It's balanced a little bit differently than the Suron. Like I said, you sit back a little bit further, maybe more ideal, but at the same time, you might want a lighter bike for that, so your mileage may vary. As far as for cruising around and dipping though, this thing is just very sweet. It's super comfortable, it's big. There's many places to sit on it. You could probably throw someone on the back of this thing easily if you wanted to. But, um, yeah, and plus, you know, one thing I love, it's a brand new bike. Uh, so it just feels good no matter what. This is a kind of a steep road. We're just gonna slowly creep up it and see where we end up going. We're in sport mode, fully pinned. I mean, the Suron wouldn't have a problem doing this either, but it's good to see that this handles going up hills like this with ease going about 25 miles per hour not bad at all this is a really hilly part of uh la so we're just gonna cruise around here for a bit keep getting some elevation in and uh see how it handles in different grades of hills right here by chinatown we are gonna dip out once we come up here on sunset and head towards chinatown get a little bit of uh urban accident another thing to keep in mind is you can't really feather the throttle to ease in you like once you once the throttle is engaged it's pretty much just i think it's just going so you got to keep that in mind pretty much at all times when you're in sport mode luckily the brakes on this bike feel nice and capable so you know there's that this little downhill stretch we got right here See if we can get any air off this curb. Oh yeah, we got some air right there. Okay, a little something. You know, nothing spectacular, but we didn't manage to get off the ground. Cruising along, we're gonna make this right and then slide down into Chinatown from here. Another thing I noticed is that my arms do feel much more stretched out. Like, I feel like they're extended. As in, compared to the Suron, where they're kind of like bent. So, I mean, I don't, I don't know, I'm just pointing that out. That could be a personal preference thing. I kind of prefer being at the seating angle this bike puts you in, where you're a little bit further back. It does feel more comfortable. But then again, I think that is gonna be a matter of personal preference for pretty much everybody. Some people, I mean, the hard thing about these bikes is that you can't really go test them out. I don't think you can go to the Luna Cycles and test out Surons. From what I last heard, they don't let people do that anymore because of an accident that someone had or something like that. I mean, take that with a grain of salt. You can call them and ask, but the best way would be to go and sit on both bikes. I do believe if you go to the RAR HQ out in Harupa Valley, they will let you like sit on a bike and at least see how it feels. I don't know about test riding one. Don't take my word for that, but they'll at least let you sit on it and you know, see if it's the right size for you or if it's too big or too small etc i think for most taller people a common complaint is that the suron is just not big enough i think it is just barely big enough for me because i'm 511 and it's like it almost feels small but it also feels flickable so there's that now if you just want a big bike to cruise on well this will be right up your alley obviously it's significantly bigger look at these stairs dude it feels so good bombing stairs on this bike it's like nothing at all i wonder if we can get to the top of that and bomb all of them how would we get up there i would like to bomb all those stairs please i don't know if we can figure out how to get there Whew. sport mode man it just yanks you around it's kind of fun but also it's a little bit nerve-wracking. <laughs> Just a tad bit. 
Let's see. Ooh, they rode through a bunch of glass right there. Hopefully these tires are nice and juicy. Shouldn't have a problem. Where the heck am I? I have no idea. Is there a way we can get through right here? Nope, I can't even fit through here. I'm not even gonna try. Go ahead and bag it up. And then of course we just have to discuss the elephant in the room, which is the modifiability of the bike. Now, as you guys know, by Saran, there's pretty much a thousand aftermarket everything you can buy for it. I don't know how many parts would be interchangeable. Obviously, probably stuff like you could buy the same wheels. Maybe suspension. I know obviously like a rear coil is just a coil, so something like that shouldn't be a problem. I don't know about the front fork if you could put like a Fox 40 factory on it. I don't know. I don't know. So, you know, that's kind of a bit of an unknown as of now, whether you can buy stuff for a Saran and fit it on this. I personally just don't know. Obviously stuff like pegs, the battery, I'm going to go ahead and say, obviously, no. I do know that RAR is developing a 72 volt version from what I understand. So that could be something that, you know, is a possibility in the future that they would have a battery that you could switch back and forth. I don't know if that's ever going to be a thing. I don't know what she just said, but typical LA stuff. I would have to say that you should get the bike if you're comfortable with how it is. It has, a, like I said, I think where this fits in, because it's a little bit more expensive than a Saran, it has a few other things you would want to upgrade right off the bat as far as comfortability wise. Like the seat already feels awesome. There's multiple seating positions, uh, fatter rear tire, sort of a bigger bike too. Right now, the only way to get like a bigger bike from the brand Suron would be to get the Ultra B, which is pretty much impossible to find right now. I have one on order from before I even got in touch with this company. So I'll be getting the Ultra B, hopefully within the next three weeks, maybe four. You know, there's not that many options for a significantly larger bike. There's also the Talaria, which I just don't have any experience with, so I can't really comment on it. But I've heard the Talaria is a little bit larger. I don't know if it's as much bigger like this is, so, you know, take that with a grain of salt. I can't really speak on that. I would love to try one out, but I just haven't. So I can't really tell you which one's better or worse. A little bit of dirt shredding. We're in sport mode. Okay, I was <laughs> actually had to check. I forgot if we're in sport or eco mode. And I say that not because the sport mode is weak, but because the eco three mode is actually pretty punchy. It's got quite a bit of juice compared to uh, the two and one. One is just completely underpowered. You'll probably get like a max 10 miles per hour in Eco One. Two is like, it's like this weird gray area where I don't know why I'd ever want to use Eco Two, but like it's there, so I don't know. And then three is, it's basically like a slightly nerfed sports mode. So there's that. As you see, really quick 44 miles an hour. This bike does pull when you're in sport mode there's no doubt about that now we're gonna hit this set of stairs there's a dude it doesn't look like he's moving actually what else could we do i do not I want to startle him by riding past him maybe we'll circle back and he'll have moved but so for now he owns that staircase nothing you can do welcome to la i think we can kind of do something over here though so at least we get a little bit more stair bombing in oh This one's kind of sketch. Oh. Holy, that was, <laughs> that was kind of wicked. The seating position puts you in a better spot for when you're going downstairs. I feel less like I'm over the front of the handlebars, like I sometimes do with the Saran. And another thing is, if you squeeze the front brakes in an emergency, like uh, while you're going down, that would not be good. <laughs> You would definitely front flip immediately. So that's something to keep in mind. Other than that, going downstairs is a breeze. Not something that anyone would buy a Saran or any electric type of dirt bike for specifically, but it's good to know they could do it for these. All right, we're gonna keep going down, continue our free ride adventure. Going past Chinatown towards Union Station. Couple new camps. It's been a minute since I've been to downtown LA actually, at least like a month probably. 
Always a couple of new tents every time I scroll through this area or just about anywhere. I keep on moseying down. There's another spot I want to check out right up here across Alameda. So that is where we're going now. There goes the sheriff. I'm concerned with me. And there's this right turn in Union Station. I do not ever feel comfortable riding on the street in downtown LA. I just feel like there's cars breathing down my neck constantly, which is the case. So it's not like I'm wrong in feeling that. <laughs> they are right behind me at all times. So, some of us, I believe this is the county jail, if I'm not mistaken. Thankfully, I've never been there, so I don't actually know. I don't know where this goes. I think I can get out this way. Alright, so far so good. Day two on the Mantis. I had a lot of fun on this bike. Wasn't sure how I was going to feel about it when I initially saw it. First, I was impressed. Then I was worried because of how big it is. After my second day riding it, I'm definitely more confident in its capabilities. I didn't think it would be able to do any type of urban free ride. I thought it would be like pretty much a wrap for doing any type of city stuff because uh, it's just a little too similar to a dirt bike. And I thought that would be, you know, the kiss of death for it. But it's not bad. It's actually not bad. I'm definitely getting, I think, more looks than I get when I'm doing these cruises on my Suron. I think this goes on the freeway. <laughs> yeah, it does. Good thing I didn't just rip that. That would have been awkward. This is actually an off ramp for the freeway. I am wilding. The motor has a very unique sound and whir when you decelerate, which is also interesting. cruising on we're going to cruise through um, so the problem with riding in the street on this though is that it does not have a tail light which is like the bare minimum for kind of like doing what I'm doing right now which is like means get away with even riding in the street whatsoever this bike is the, they make it very clear it is for off-road use only which is technically how all these bikes are you know what you choose to do with it like what I'm doing right now is at your own discretion want to put that out there just want to make that very clear that what i do on my channel at any time is not anything i condone you to do i just do it because i lack brain cells anyways right in the cross gas over here is seven dollars a gallon go figure we have got to get across a bunch of miserable streets to cross we're gonna go ahead and go with this sanitation truck one thing to keep in mind i never actually did a range test with my suron so i am interested to see how it compares uh, off the top of my head i say we've done five and a half miles so we're currently at 56 percent we started at what 75 20 percent and five miles of sports mode going uphill i personally don't think that's that bad it's not as good as a high capacity battery obviously but I think that's actually somewhat similar to the Suron. It's in the same ballpark at least. I would say on my Suron, realistically, I probably get, would get like 25 miles from full to flat in sport mode the entire time doing inclines. So I think that's right around the same range. I mean, it, at the end of the day, it's gonna be math, right? The, it's the same size battery. It's a heavier bike and a more powerful motor. So if anything, you might get slightly less range, but I don't think it would be that much of a difference. I think it'd be pretty similar. But that remains to be seen. Oh my God, dude, starting from sport mode is just horrifying and I have to stop doing it. Especially from a stoplight. It just does not feel comfortable. It does feel like the bike is just gonna shoot from straight under you. So, well, when you guys see this, that is my one word of advice that I have immediately is tune the sports mode to make it a little bit more gentle. Because as of right now, it's good. It definitely rips, but it's just not, it doesn't flow like it's not i don't know that bike is sick all right and places i'm not supposed to be episode 2142 definitely feels good in dirt i can say that much i will do another video Strictly in the dirt. This is kind of like, eh, this is a little bit of free ride-ish. As we go on, the free ride test will continue, but as of for today, you know, 
I'm still, it's still just my second day on this bike. And it is a different beast than the Surah. At the end of the day, they are similar and they are different in about equal capacities on both sides. They're equally similar and equally different. You know, it's another bike to get used to. I don't want to just hop on it and start shredding right off the gate. Projects right here. I didn't know there were projects out here. Not a bad first shred on the Mantis. You have to hold the reverse button while throttling, which is kind of unwieldy. But it's a reverse, which is kind of neat. <laughs> All right, quick cruise out here in the industrial area. We are going to pull up on this corner, right back at the park that we started on. I'm going to say how many miles we traveled. And boom, we will stop the ride right here. Let's take a look at some stats. Oops, I just turned the bike off. But we're at like 6.7 miles or something like that, or seven, I don't know exactly. We started at 76%, 75, 76. We're now 51. So it's about 25 percent all right folks that's going to do it for today's video on the raw mantis not the longest kind of short on time today first link in the description is where you will see this bike if you want to check it out in the comments let me know if you have any questions i'll do my best to answer more videos coming all week stay tuned as always thanks for watching peace out